Hi, my name is Aaron, and this is my show, Re-Education. Uh, so the economy, <laughs> it's gonna collapse. <laughs> so as some of you may very well know, um, over Christmas, uh, the stock market's seen the largest single day drop in almost human history since basically the 1930s. And um, that signals to me that it's time for us to probably start to prepare. Uh, okay, so let me explain a little bit uh, about the uh, economy to everyone here who doesn't understand what's going on. Basically, the 2009 crash, there was no recovery, at least not for the middle and working class. There was a recovery for the business class, the top 0.001% who ended up receiving several trillion dollars in uh, quantitative easing, quantitative easing being basically uh, the governments of all of the different countries giving, as a gift, a bunch of money to the CEOs of major corporations and banks and hoping, hoping amongst hope, that they'll trickle this money down towards the workers and not just put it inside of their pockets, which is exactly what they did. The stock market itself, when you look at it, uh, it tends to be doing something very interesting. Now, you'll see that uh, in 2009, uh, between uh, 2007 and 2009, there was a crash and then a recovery. Uh, we got back up to the point where we were before. And you can see a little bit of a, almost like an, a hint that we were supposed to kind of have a crash right there. But then something really interesting happened. Trump. Trump happened. What Trump did was he basically completely deregulated the system. He's created a system where there's virtually no protections, almost no laws, and we've reverted back to almost a laissez-faire system where it's just fucked. The history of the world has not seen a rise of wealth that could compare to what we are seeing at this current moment. The amount of money that is flushed into the system because of this quantitative easing, which, mind you, has continued on as China just released billions of dollars back into the uh, economy so that they could save their failing economy as well. The amount of money that is flush in this system is grotesque, and it is all based on debt. Let me explain this. The Federal Reserve prints money. It's printing debt. It prints money to give away as quantitative easing to the large corporations and banks. There's nothing backing that money. It's, they're just literally just printing bills. Where have you heard that before? How many times have you heard that fail? A lot. Exactly. And somehow, somehow, we haven't seen any sort of inflation. We haven't seen any sort of real problem. But I'm telling you right now... There will be. Quantitative easing can be thought of as a shot of adrenaline into the heart of a patient who's about to die. It, it, it's literally just kickstarting the heart a little bit so it can keep pumping for a little while, but inevitably, the symptoms that cause that person to just about die are still there. They haven't gone away. They haven't been cured. Okay, so what does this mean then exactly? Like I said before, I'm not all about problems, I'm about solutions. So how could we solve this problem? Well, you and I can't. But what we can do is we can prepare for it. So I have a few things that I want to discuss about preparing for such an event. So in the case of an economic crisis, there is going to be shortages. If people aren't getting paid, then certain things aren't going to happen. And one of those things is a major, major deal. One of them is the trucking industry and the transportation of goods industry in general. Right now, we have a system that relies on deliveries as they're needed. Grocery stores and big box stores don't really have a back room anymore. They get food and so forth that day. That's how you can get fresh bananas and fresh fruits and, and that sort of thing. They're delivered that day or the previous day in a very short amount of time. If the truckers aren't getting paid, they're not going to be delivering the food. And you'll notice very quickly that there will be massive shortages of all kinds of food items. And also all kinds of toiletries and necessities. Basically, 
basically there is going to be massive shortages. I remember reading somewhere that I think it was FEMA suggests that every American should prepare for at least six months worth of food and uh, water in case of an emergency. And I would say that that is at least a very good place to start. Um, six months is a very long time, but if you look at how disaster relief has been handled in the past, uh, it might be smart to pack more than that. If nothing happens at all, the very worst outcome is that you spent a little bit of money on some extra food. And if something does happen, then you can at least be prepared for it. At least that's the way I look at it. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, this has been Re-Education. My name is Aaron, and uh, thanks for watching.